Hello there. Today I'm sitting in Aiban Tea Garden. It's located on Tapingzhang, on the top of Jingmai Mountain, in the famous uh, forested tea gardens. And the topic of today will be uh, what's the importance of shade trees in a tea garden. The classical image we have of a tea garden is like terraces with very um, uh, with the tea trees forming forming a carpet of leaves this might be the the right picture we get from 50 50 years ago but uh, nowadays the big trend has been to to plant shade trees in the tea gardens all over the world so um, uh, let's explore a little bit well, what would be the the point of planting shade trees in the tea gardens. So most obvious, it will provide shade to your tea gardens. What's the purpose of this? Well, um, at first you could think that it's a drawback because you know that plants need light to do photosynthesis. If your tea is under no water stress or nutrient stress or disease or stuff like that, what will be determining your yield will be the light. The more light your trees receive, the higher the yield. However, you must know that uh, naturally in nature uh, tea trees grow at the border of thick of thick forests so that means that they are supposed to grow in a in a partially shaded environment okay at the border of the of the big forest you could say you have like shade plants and sun plants uh, some plants are designed to grow under the full sun exposure and some plants are better fit growing under a under a forest cover and tea tree the, the tea trees belong to the second kind the it's a shade plant so you could think that uh, bringing more light to the tea trees will probably increase the, um, the yield a little bit if you have no other stress but it won't increase it dramatically because um, the tea tree is um, by, by nature designed to, to grow in the shade. So I, I read a paper of 1965 in Sri Lanka. They, they made the test and they got 15% lower production in, uh, under the forest cover, under the shade tree cover, compared to a, a full, a full sun growth. 15% reduction in yield is not huge, especially considering that it only applies when the tea trees have no other stress. Most of the time, if your garden is not managed in, um, in the most intensive way, in the most uh, high yield way, most of the time the yield will be limited by something else. Typically in early spring it will be, uh, it will be a water stress, there won't be enough rain and your tea trees will lack of water water is used to carry the nutrients all all over the tea trees so no water no no nutrients in the trees and so that makes a stress and independently of light you can have as much less light as you want if you don't have that water it won't grow same for the nutrients if you have water but you have no nutrients in the soil uh, then again uh, how much light you get doesn't really matter but there are some cases in which having shade is actually beneficial for the yield and it's the, the case in many um, tea growing areas. So it's in the case that uh, the temperature is very high and your soil kind of lacks of water. Under these conditions it's better to have shade because it limits the, the loss by evaporation and it avoids photorespiration. What happens if the temperature is high, your tea tree is under water stress and the sun is lighting the, um, the leaves directly? Well, the tea tree is going to stop uh, photosynthesis because it doesn't want to lose water. Uh, you know that for photosynthesis you, ne you need CO2 and that CO2 you need to capture it from the atmosphere. At the base of the leaf there are kind of small windows which are called stoma and when the stoma is open the air can be exchanged but also the water in the plant evaporates. So if the tea tree is under water stress and there's um, a high risk of uh, too much evaporation the tea tree will close the windows, will close the stoma and so um, it won't be able to, to get that CO2 and actually you'll get another process which is called photorespiration 
instead of getting the, the CO2, um, the, the plant will, um, we will take up other gases to, to do the, the, photosyn the photosynthesis reaction, the Calvin cycle, and it will put a mass, it will um, make toxic compounds that will need to be processed further, so it lowers the efficiency of the photosynthesis. Um, so you get a double damage, you don't produce, you don't make photosynthesis and you build up some nasty compounds that you will have to uh, metabolize later on. So you want to avoid photorespiration and for this planting shade trees is a great idea. Now another use of the shade is that uh, it's much better working conditions for the tea pickers. You can imagine that the life of the tea picker is being in the in the tea gardens maybe 10 hours a day and it's much more bearable if you're under a shade cover than if you're under the hot sun of Assam or um, southern India. So, fr so from this perspective of having a shade in the tea in the tea gardens it's highly recommended especially if you're at low altitude where you will have high temperatures. But there are, there are other services that the shade trees provide. Mainly, they help you recycle the nutrients in the ecosystem. What happens? Usually, you plant the shade trees, they are taller than the tea trees, and you know that um, the, usually the taller the trees, the deeper the roots. So if, the, if your shade trees are much taller than the tea trees, they will have much deeper roots. And you know what happens when the nutrients go through the soil? It's a process called leaching. Uh, let's say you put nutrients on top of the soil, like through fertilizer or through this kind of um, mulch. When it's going to rain, the, the nutrients will be percolated through the soil. They will be diluted in water and will be transported in the lower layer of the soil. And in the tropics we have very deep soils, they can go as, as deep as a hundred meter. So um, usually when you're, on, when you're on flat ground you don't even see the, the bedrock in the tropics because the soils are very deep. The problem with deep soils is that the nutrients will go down, will go very deep in the soil and will be lost, they will be unreachable by the plants. Okay, because they will have been carried away by the water as it's raining. So there are two kinds of nutrient losses. Either they are um, washed away by the rain from the surface, either they are leached, which means they are transported deep within the soil and they, they are inaccessible. So if you have your shade trees, you will have a layer deeper down the soil you will have a layer of roots, a root network that will help you capture the nutrients that are that are going away, that are being lost through leaching. And so uh, these nutrients will be captured by the, by the roots, then they will be pumped through the tree and the tree will grow new leaves. The shade trees will grow new leaves, these leaves will eventually die and will end up on the ground like this cover you, ha you have here. And again, the, the nutrients will be uh, incorporated in the soil and they will have another chance at being captured by the tea trees. And if they are not captured this time, again, they will still go through the network of roots, through the root network of the shade trees and have another chance of being captured and put back on top. So by having shade trees, I think you drastically improve the, the efficiency of your fertilization because you will lose much less nutrients through, through leaching. Also this, uh, this root system provides a, a better soil stability, uh, which can be important in some areas where the, where the terrain is prone to landslides. And I've seen, I've seen this in, in some tea gardens, like you, have the, you don't have any shade trees and, the, and you have landslides and a, a big part of the tea gardens are just carried away. So if you're on heavy slopes, it's even more recommended actually to have, um, to have shade trees for this stabilizing effect. 
Now another use of shade trees is that it uh, usually enhances biodiversity. You can see this in this video, you can see the flies flying over the, the camera objective and when you're, you're in the tea garden you can feel that you're surrounded by insects and all kinds of animals. Right now I must have at least 10 insects crawling on my body. Well, it's obvious that in forests you, um, you have a higher biodiversity than if you didn't have that uh, tree cover. It's why it's simply because uh, with, the, um, with the shaded and unshaded spaces you have in the garden, you have more ecological niches created. Then in the, you increase the, the verticality uh, of your ecosystem, so you will have more niches at different uh, stages in your tree. That will increase your biodiversity and you always want more biodiversity because it will sta stabilize your ecosystem. If you have some pests that are coming to your tea trees and that want to eat your tea, your tea leaves, if you have a rich ecosystem, it's even more likely that you will find a hard counter to this spe species among the stuff living in your ecosystem. So, for example, the more typical here is we, we have a lot of spiders and spiders love shade, so you find a lot more of them in the, in the shaded gardens but you will also find praying mantis, um, those uh, assassin bugs, all these, um, all these predators, these insect predators are very good um, safeguards against pest attacks. Of course with higher biodiversity you will also have new pests coming, so um, I'd say if, if you want zero damage it will be harder if you have a forest cover because you will have more, more life in your gardens. But if you can tolerate some damage, uh, then overall you will have less damage than if you were in an open field. You're less likely to, to lose the whole harvest due to a pest attack. On the other hand, a drawback, well it can be a drawback in some environment, if your environment is quite wet, then uh, it can be more dangerous to have a forest cover between, because it will keep the moisture even more and I've read in some papers that uh, this increased humidity in your garden makes the, um, the disease uh, danger higher like you, you can have the, all the fungi and the nasty stuff that will eat your tea trees can develop better if you have higher humidity so that can be a drawback Mm, if you have problems with that, um, especially if the varietal you've planted is more sensitive to disease. Mm, like usually the, the Varsinensis is more sensitive to, to disease than the, the Assamica varietal and then you have to check your cultivar. Uh, well it, it's also a source of wood and, and this is not to neglect because in many places uh, if you use um, wood firing, if you use wood during the tea processing or for living, uh, there are many areas which uh, lack of wood. And when you well, when you prune, you you can prune your shade trees and use them as a source of wood. Uh, so this is always a nice bonus. Mm, managing shade trees can be a bit. A little bit of work like you have an extra work you have to plant them and then you have to prune them once in a while maybe once <coughs> once every three years or when you deem it necessary but it's not a lot of work and I would say overall if you choose a, a low intensive approach like if you don't have much workforce available I would say that all the services that the, um, that the shade trees will provide will really outweigh the the work needed for establishing the shade trees and will probably outweigh the, the lower yield you, you get. If you have shaded trees you can also probably uh, sell your tea a bit more expensive than common tea because usually customers love to see those uh, tea garden. Don't really neglect the, that aesthetic aspect of the gardens because you can see that in many areas it helps throughout the development process of the mountain like really Jingma is famous partly because it's a really beautiful place you can see a great landscape around it helps draw in tourists and um, yeah sure if the if the gardens were ugly 
probably the tea would be less expensive. So summing up all these factors, I would say that for most plantations, it's worthwhile to have, uh, to have shade trees. Now, it can be um, like in the ancient tea gardens, it's not really shade trees, it's like a, na a natural forest which, will, which has been partly cleared out to make room for the tea trees. So that's why this uh, landscape will be a little bit different than if you have a plantation and plant shade trees. Um, but you could think that the functionalities uh, provided by the shade trees will be roughly the same. Maybe only the, the landscape, the aesthetic will be different. Now I'd recommend if you plant shade trees that you plant maybe four or five species at least. It's good to have a, a diversity of species because as you know diversity is the spice of life. Well in Yunnan you, you see for example camphor trees which are um, which are known as uh, they are known to repel insects. I don't know exactly um, it, whether it works or not. I guess only sometimes some types of insects are uh, concerned with that. It can be a strategy. It's called the push-pull strategy. Let's say you want to fight aphids. You can plant some uh, repellents, uh, some repellent species in your garden, and around your garden you can plant some species that will attract these aphids. So that's the way. You, you push them away from your garden and you pull them uh, somewhere where you don't care about them. But uh, I haven't seen this uh, strategy being applied in the, in the tea world. Mm, it'd be an interesting stuff. But I think a good choice would be to, to just imitate nature and, and find local species. Uh, I would think that's the most important, so also as not to disturb the, the surrounding environment. And uh, maybe you can consider some legumin leguminous trees, you know, those, uh, those trees which have the ability to capture some of the uh, atmospheric nitrogen and convert it, and convert it into, a, a, let's say, a digestible uh, nitrogen, a digestible form of nitrogen mm, by the plants, so that uh, you get that bonus, that extra, uh, yeah, that extra fertilization. Oh, also something I forgot to mention is, as you can see here, we don't have many weeds growing here, so if you have a thick cover, uh, maybe you will save a bit of time on weed management. So this is also great. Um, now it's up to you when you plant your shade trees. You, you can decide on how heavy, uh, or how heavy a shading you want, and this will be determined by the by the planting density and also by the, the type of trees that you plant. Maybe some will make like an umbrella or something like that and will provide a light shade over a large area. Some will have a thick cover over a tiny area. So, well, the, the choice is up to you. Oh, and also a last very good advantage that I forgot to mention, which is actually very relevant, is that you, it offers a physical protection against um, against ex extreme climatic events, like hailstorms. Uh, you know that, um, I think la last month we had a big hailstorm in Jiang Mai and it killed quite a lot of tea trees. Well, not a lot, but a few, you know. And uh, of course, if you have a, if you have a layer uh, of shade trees above your tea gardens, well, they will be much less impacted by that hailstorm. So if you want to make like ancient tea gardens, if you plant your tea trees for the long term, maybe that's also something to consider. You don't want your trees to die after 30 or 40 years because of a big storm. So then also having them grow in a forest is a good advantage. Yeah, so that's about it for today. If you have other uh, thoughts and insights about those shade trees or other questions, please put them in the comment sections and uh, I will be happy to answer directly or make a video to answer them. Thank you for watching and